Hello, anybody, somebody, nobody, or I may never see this. This is If Your Dog's Under Faust, the Whiff, coming at you with some video game discussion. Let me go over my top 10 personal favorite video games of all time. I thought about this list and about the games I chose. I'd say it's ones I either played the most or I had the most fun playing. And I'll try to do some honorable mention songs. I remember them at the end. So. This is a top 10 list, however it is by no means in order. As these games vary in playtime, how often I play them, my enjoyment of them, and how great I subjectively believe them to be. As such, it's hard to make a top 10 list, let alone sort these great choices above or below each other, at least for me personally. These games may not be for everyone, but I will recommend all but Sengoku Rants for everyone. Um, that is because it is an H game, it is a mature rated X game. Uh, rest in peace KOTOR because it was on this list but then I for some reason didn't remember Kingdom Hearts so Kingdom Hearts took KOTOR. That will be an honorable mention along with others I'll get to eventually. So first one is going to be Persona 3, the FES and PSP versions. So you can play the original, I think if I had to rate them it goes original, PS, uh, it goes FES, PSP and original last because they just have more content. And the opening song for F Persona 3 FES is so good. I love it, it's so good. I highly recommend you just type in Persona 3 FES and you listen to that. Uh, Persona 3, part of the Shin Megumi Tensei series, uh, basically uh, you collect demons or spirits and you usually solve a mystery while saving the world while doing it and uh, yeah, it takes place almost usually in Japan, and it's pretty cool. So you have a um, picture of Odin here, Thanatos from Greek, I believe. So you have a lot of different gods, no, not Greek, um, no, I'm blanking out, but yeah, you have different mythologies present, including Christianity, um, Egyptian, Greek, and Norse, along with... Uh, just regular folklore creatures and Jap just a lot of Japanese characters mythology and Persona 3 was controversial because you awaken your hidden power by shooting yourself in the fucking face um, that made some moms mad in PTAs etc now the thing is, is you don't it actually you use an invoker which sends a small electronic burst uh, so you're not blowing your brains out which is good but you are tasing yourself effectively um, just a really quick tase and it basically jump starts your, I don't know, inner spirit into activating and resonating with another spirit and or itself, basically your mana, your ability for this spirit to then fight the darkness. And these darkness is usually evil creatures that are kind of just like wild magic taken form, you could say, that are terrorizing and or being controlled by a group or person to accomplish a goal. Now Persona 3 in particular, Unlike Persona 4, 5, Q, etc., it's not an evil company, it's not an angry person, um, it's not other stupid nonsense. Uh, this is about uh, life or death of the planet. Um, and furthermore, it's going to be uh, questioning your reality. It's like, okay, it's like kind of like eco terrorism. Like, you know, do we, does humanity deserve life? For everything we've done to harm the planet, etc., uh, and you explore these different characters. Um, they're not super deep, but it is just so fun to play this bloody game. I think it is by far one of the best of the entire Persona series. Um, Persona Two, uh, both versions of it are pretty good as well. No one really talks about them. Um, Eternal Punishment and uh, was it Divine Sin or something? Um, it's been a long minute. I wish they got a bit more discussion along with the Digital Devil series and just all the spin-offs from Shin Megumi Tensei. Uh, if you can, it, it, this is for PlayStation, um, but you can also get the PlayStation portable version or you can just ROM it probably. It's very good. Highly recommend it. I wish they did a PC release. Persona 3, especially FES, was just so much fun. Um, especially if they're able to add a little bit more content, but it was such a good story. Most of these games are going to get me with the story. The story alone for Persona 3 um, got me to care about the characters versus, like, I think Nanako and Juness for 4 were really good. And 
the cheese mechanic with death and sickness at five was funny. Um, I didn't care for Q at all, etc. Something and the mystery aspect in the older games were more focused on mystery. It's almost like the Resident Evil aspect, where it's like, oh, do you do like problem solving or combat, which is the more focus of the horror genre game. So this had combat, but the combat was like a dungeon grind. Um, it was a dungeon crawl, I should say, not grind. But it was more focused on building your relationships with other characters, which in turn would grow your dungeon power, kind of, because you can unlock stronger spirits, and it would allow you to get more bonuses, um, and there was different ways you could do it. I don't know. There's just so much. And they continue to do this with Persona games, but I feel like this was the pinnacle. Uh, yeah, I could just talk about it over and over. Also, another good scene is when... Um, he summons uh, Orpheus to defend himself against the shadows, and his own spirit just rips itself in fucking half, and out of it comes Thanatos, and just slaughters everything. It's so good. Um, and the final boss is super cool. Um, I would I would argue the final boss and the real final boss from uh, FES. And so, uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend checking all that stuff out, because... Yeah, the character is emo and ridiculous as they look. They make it make sense. Uh, I could just... I'm not sure how long I want this video to be. I'm going to talk about 10 great games and rant a bit more. Is there anything else I want to talk about Persona 3 to do it justice? Uh, no. I'd say if you, if you are watching this video, try to check out the gameplay for any of these along with the music. I'm not going to have that because of copyright possibly. And it could just be much, much longer. Um, I just decided to make this quick little uh, slideshow PowerPoint just because I was really motivated at one point to just talk about some different things I watch um, and like. So I'm going to cover a bunch of different things, including literature. But for now, it's this, and then we go into some anime shows and movies. That was a separate video. So Persona 3, yeah, check it out. If you like any of the Persona games. Uh, and for instance, the newest Digimon game... He's basically like Digital Devil, which again is a ripoff of Persona series, which is a ripoff of Shin Megami Tensei in general. So, I think it's the more updated version of a dungeon crawl without a game monotonous. So, Disgaea, the first game only. There is Disgaea, like two versions of Disgaea 1, I think, two or three additional. And then there's, uh, I'm sorry, one or two additional game versions of. Uh, game one, and then there's Disguise Two, Disguise Three, Disguise Four, Disguise Five, and other spin-offs. Pretty, I could be the uh, Hero Two dude, and etc. or something like that. So they got little penguin butlers that serve you in hell. You're effectively kind of like the Son of Satan, but it's more of a comedy game. Honestly, it's ridiculous, and the characters are just a huge laugh. You have a little man chip on your shoulder, ego. No one takes you seriously, so you have to fight all the other demons to get some respect, to level up because you've been poisoned and you were sleeping a long time. And you end up working with your assassin and an angel that was sent to turn you into a good guy, and you end up just slowly like corrupting the angel. And it kinda. And <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not gonna go into what happens, but it's probably uh, this. I don't remember everything on this list because I made this like a couple weeks ago, but probably top three in overall stories of video game stories I've ever played for the first game. As it goes on, they try to make you care about other characters and their their, their backstories in the other games. They, they're kind of like Mary Sue characters or they're very whiny and stuff. Like the, the what, Disgaea 4? It's either Disgaea 3 or Disgaea 4. The dude has his game broken by his dad and he goes on a vengeance spree it's it's a bunch of real stupid shit and he goes to school and, yeah anyway, anyway um sky one has the human world the demon world and the angelic world it's got conspiracy theories rise of power political intrigue court system um you can uh work a lot with the market uh it's again a dungeon crawl uh has tons of replayability um, a lot of items you can also then replay to get that are unique or give certain bonuses. Uh, oh, and you get different movesets depending on what weapon you use. 
So while each character has some unique things they can do based on their, uh, if they have a unique character ID or they're part of a certain race slash species of creature, they also get different movesets for the weapon. And the weapons get better as well. And there's different weaknesses, strengths, um, the terrain advantages, disadvantages to include height, can play into aerial things. There's magic, there's buffs, debuffs, there's so bloody much. And the story, oh my god, the story. I just noticed um, the music I don't think is playing anymore. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to bring it up. No. Anyway, I had some no copyright music playing earlier. <laughs> yeah. Um, Red Moon is a beautiful song. I love singing the Japanese version personally. Um, it's one of the few songs I can sing, I think, okay. Uh, it's in another language besides English. The story is beautiful. It's heartbreaking. It's so bloody good. Uh, not much mystery. It's just like, not even rags to riches. It's a rags to riches and morality and self sense of worth where your character just, you know, thinks they run the world. They don't care about anyone, but slowly discover what it means to have compassion while being able to, you know, defend their friends and defend his title. And it's just a barrel of laughs along the way as well. Um, like, you fight a, a souped-up Frankenstein wielding a, a horse wiener. Um, and you can steal the horse wiener and equip it. Um, <laughs> yeah, the game is hilarious. It's ridiculous. Um, and again, the secondary characters... and are so popular, like, uh, Etna, the demon, in the bottom right, she got her own game, uh, and an alternate mode that's kind of more focused for her for the first game. Um, they, there's an anime, and again, this game, Disgaea, first one, Hour of Darkness, was so popular, it spanned an entire series after it. And while there can be arguably some other ones that are good, I, I argue that they're good for the content they have, not including the story, because the story just doesn't match Disgaea 1 for the other Disgaea games. Uh, 2, no. Um, there's also the, the book one. That's kind of funny. Um, the story isn't nearly as good. They, they have a lot more content that's, like, objective. Subjectively, I do not feel like the story comes close for the other games. So I'd highly recommend if checking this kind of gameplay out. And if it's a game you like, try and pick it up. It's so fun. Um... And again, if you want to waste a lot of money, there's so many other games in the series, kind of like Persona, that you can check out and play. Oh, God. There's... I just keep talking about it so much. I love the horror. And they have some fun soundtracks as well. Um, oh, so good. But yeah, just the first game. Ah, uh, yes, the black sheep of the list. Okay, so. Sengoku Rants. Actually, let me just make sure. Yeah, it's recording. Uh, Sengoku Rants. Oh, if someone is checking on the stream right now, I don't have chat open. Um, it's an H game. And H means hentai. It's a sex game. It's an arrow. So, you think, oh, I use, what those games traditionally are is you just click a button a bunch and you just speed through whatever characters you're talking. You choose one or two options and then you're like fucking a 2D image or some shit. Whatever. This is not that. This is definitely not that. There's probably two to three notable, uh, I, I never remember what's in third place, but it's basically just two games. As far as I can tell, they're usually at the top of the list of all-time Aroja games, which is um, Kamidori Alchemy Meister, uh, which is more of a dungeon crawl than this one, and then Sengoku Rants. It's arguable by people which is better. I think this is better. This has a risk aspect. So when you can see this board, you start here. You take place in Oda. You basically use the Oda clan, um, and, and that's Oda Nobunaga as well, and you kind of take over the entire continent of Japan. And Japan is actually in this giant fantasy world. And imagine this is actually to scale. So for the world that Rance is in, um, there he's like traveled the world and like made love, fucked, or and slayed across the fucking world, 
conquering and not even just conquering because he's kind of just like being a Chad. Now the earlier games, he's much more of uh, he doesn't really take no as an answer kind of guy, <laughs> which is extremely fucked up. Uh, be be assured. Um, but it's really oh god. The best way to put it is that the humorous parts in this are so fucked up that you're still trying not to laugh because they they do a good job of making them funny. Um, the music, the situations, the characters, when there's irony, um, it's, it's good. And so you don't have to root for them, but I will defend that it is a good game and it's a funny game. So this is like Risk. So you take over the continent, or... Well, in this game, it's a continent of Japan, giant island. You have boss battles where you have your individual characters and you kind of like fight using their special skills, etc. There's a turn timer. Um, they have strengths, weaknesses, health, stats. This goes over to stats, and they can go over cost. And this is also their army. So you keep they each are leaders of troops, and so it's really crazy. It's like you're doing a combination of like. Risk, Dynasty Warriors, Fire Emblem, in a visual novel sex game. And, yeah, the character's like, ah! <laughs> just laughing like a crazy maniac. Um, and you have the beautiful girl, uh, Main Bay, over here still. <coughs> Throat's dry. So... Yeah, Sengoku Rants. It is so bloody good. It's got an insane amount of replayability. I played the fuck out of this when I was in the military. Long-ass deployments, if I had the ability to play it at the time, like with my laptop. Uh, it has, what, three additional difficulty modes, entire separate gameplay mode, like six or seven, six or seven different endings you can get, additional endings, and by playing it and accomplishing certain tasks, you'll get end game points that you can use to start with other bonuses. To start with more gold, more actions. One of the other houses you don't have to conquer or defend, they straight up ally with you. You get them as allies in the very beginning, which is insane. Um, all kinds of different things you can do. It's very crazy and very fun. And lots of different story arcs. Because again, since there's different endings and ways to play the game, um, you can actually get a character that is nice, not nice, or you don't even see them. Like, another country could just be taken over before you can get there, so you just never interact with them in the first place. So there's all kinds of crazy events that can happen. Super, super fun. Um, I've played the shit out of it, and I feel bad because there's still players that are way better than me. Um, I almost wanted to buy this for people just because I wanted, like, how good of the game this is to be experienced by my friends. Um, I ended up not getting it for the guy because he got really busy. Boy, it is just such a bloody good game. It's so much fun. Uh, and I guarantee you will struggle your first time because there's not, like, the tutorial that they give is ass. Like, I'd have to probably, I originally tried to make a recorded video, but I struggled. I don't think I ever uh, put it out. It's saved on a terabyte hard drive somewhere, I think. Um, for this game because it's there's just so much to do to get a good handle of how to play it really well and then like tips and tricks to do even better uh, and the story gets really good there is one single scene in particular that makes it so I don't I'll be surprised if it ever goes to Steam I can't see this game being on Steam you'd have to get this from Arrow, uh, Arrow Gamer or arrowmanga.com or some shit. Um, or no, Manga Gamer? I don't know. It's one of those combinations. Uh, and there is a stream version. So you can, if you don't want, it's like, hey, I want to check out the game. It looks like a cool game. But you don't want anime titties. That's fine. There's a patch you can do where you don't have to worry about that. And then you can even stream it on Twitch or YouTube. You can play with fan, uh, with your family around. And it's, it's safe for work. So it's a good game. Highly recommend it. Uh... Yeah, so if you if you want a game that's gonna just perform solid 
but then also with humor, lots of replayability, you like the risk, fire emblem aspect, or you just want to see anime titties, get this game. The artwork's nice, it's vanilla, uh, for the most part, there's nothing like super crazy, there's just some very few, but for the most part, as I said, it's vanilla, and yeah, you'll really bond with some characters as being pretty cool. Again, Rance is your main powerhouse, uh, but there's just so much content. My dog is going to go for a walk after I'm done. <laughs> Tabletop Simulator slash Warhammer 40k. So, this is a combination. I'm going to be talking about both. So, I love Warhammer 40k. I've spent probably the last year almost going hard on this game. It is so much, and I don't think most of that time is a waste. Because I just I love the storyline, the plot, the of the main story, the lore, and then the tabletop game itself. Now, it is the most expensive tabletop game in the world by far. I would have had to dump probably twenty to thirty k uh, U.S. dollars to play it if I was playing it IRL. Which uh, yeah, I'm poor. I can't do that. So I use Tabletop Simulator. Tabletop Simulator is a Steam game you can use as a medium, which is kind of almost like uh, VR to access and play other games. And it includes indirectly through people basically adding to it, for the most part, um, every board or card game almost ever made. Now, the people who own those games can reach out and have it canceled, but for the most part, it doesn't happen. Uh, people making other versions, yada, 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 yada. Anyway, the. Warhammer is a thriving community online. Um, there's a Discord with tens of thousands of people in it, and that's just the main group, but there's so many more. Uh, I've played every single Warhammer 40k army. Um, if you check out my channel, you'll see this. Oh, or sorry. I have made every single one. I've not played them all. They used to be a true sentence, true statement uh, for the ones I listed in the beginning. Um, I've not played them all and then does it really count as playing them all if they've gone through crazy updates and changes? So Yeah, the Warhammer 40k a Single like League of Legends or Pokemon Unite Pokemon Unite 10 minutes League of Legends about 15 to 20 minutes a single game of Warhammer 40k Two and a half to four to five hours usually um, for a 2,000 point match it, it is insane, uh, but it's also so much fun. I think every army is cool. It's like, I hate that statement, oh, what kind of music you like? Oh, I like everything. What kind of Warhammer army you like? Oh, I like them all. But like, they're all cool. They all got cool lore to some degree, some more than others. Um, my favorite is Necron, but that's not the one I win most with. That's for sure. But damn it, I, I love Necron. Uh, tabletop Simulator, 20 bucks. Maybe you don't even care about Warhammer. You're like, okay, action figures and army tactics, sci-fi thing, five-hour game. I, yeah, I don't have time for that. No worries. And that's just playing the game. It's also the, the, a lot of time you have to get into it learn the rules. It's like, okay, well, how about chess, checkers? What if you want to play Monopoly? You want to play with family back home or something, life? and Because you could buy the game life, or you can just play it here, along with thousands, tens of thousands of other games. Every card game ever made. And it's like, oh, well, what, you like Cards Against Humanity? Boom. It's here, it's free, and every single expansion ever made. And you can make your own cards, and it's free. Versus having to spend the enormous amount of money just for that. So this is a huge, huge money saver. Um, with the amount of content that's there, you just go to Steam, Workshops, and you look for the different mods for things that people have made, and you can play the different games. Highly recommend Tabletop Simulator. Um, because it just it gave me the option to explore the hobby that I've loved since I was a kid, but I didn't have the uh, finances to actually get into and try other board games with people as well. The Villainous series for Disney and their Marvel spinoff, um, a bunch of cards and other board games I played with friends. Um, oh, God. What's the name of that game we haven't played in a while? Call to Adventure. And there's still so many more. I just get butthurt because I have to usually learn a lot of the rules. And I usually like to know the rules too. But I'll be damned if I'm not like always the guy who has to learn everything. Uh, but yeah, it's easy 
easily probably the most cost efficient video game purchase I have ever made. Ever, hands down. And Warhammer 40k, uh, if you don't like it, stop watching me. <laughs> don't watch my content. Because I fucking love Warhammer. It's so good. Uh, if you, even if you don't want to play the game, check out the lore. It's, it's amazing. Warcraft 3, custom games. Yes, fuck the game. So, <laughs> this includes the old one. So, the base lore for Warcraft 3, Reign of Chaos, and um, Frozen Throne, decent. Good. Uh, I think it's actually above average or great as a story. Written down on paper, really, really fucking good. Um, just an arc, an omnibus of collection of stories that you travel through with Arthas' uh, tasking from him as a young prince helping out Uther into his corrupted state. Beautiful. I think it actually is wonderful to read and or listen to. Um, the game itself, dog. Dog water. Don't. It, it's not terrible, but compared to other things, it's just not that great. It's nothing I would write home about or waste my time on. And it would definitely not make this fucking list. The custom games, though. Oh, and we're not even going to go into Reforged. Like, that shit show. My god. Um, but the custom games. Winter Mall. Winter Mall was basically tower defense. The tower defense genre has risen and fallen. Um, back then, during this time frame, it was its heyday, kind of, uh, really popular. I remember playing Winter Mall in my high school. I was taking coding classes in my comp sci course, and I was doing above average, kind of, but I had a lot of friends helping me. I ended up struggling hard. I should have paid more attention. Anywho, uh, and so oh, we just wasted a lot of time instead of doing Winter Mall. We just rushed through the assignment. We did get a good grade, and then we just played Winter Mall, and the teacher doesn't care because we're already done, or he knows we're going to do good. So he just lets us play games in the middle of class. There's no point. It's like, why are you people here? And so we just had so much fun playing this tower defense uh, and the custom games. Hero Line Wars. Hero Line Wars, uh, where you can uh, build your own like character, give them certain abilities, try different combinations, and you both defend and send enemy creeps at the enemy. So this is kind of like Clash of Clans. This is early Clash of Clans. Defense of the Ancients. <coughs> Dota. Yes, Dota came from Warcraft 3. Fucking MOBAs were basically born from Warcraft 3 custom games. Ugh! Like, that's where it came from. Uh, you like MOBAs? That you're welcome. And then lastly, uh, Dragon Ball Z Tribute, or in the Dragon Ball Z games in general. There's a bunch of other Arena Wars and stuff. That there's a, The list just goes on and on. Footman Frenzy, um, Horde vs. Alliance, so much. Uh, but DBZ Tribute, I love the Dragon Ball Z Tribute games. Um, the newer iterations, I actually greatly disliked. I didn't like what they did with them. And some characters were, like, super broken. Uh, like, Krillin was absurd. Some of the power bonuses. That and the training routes were very metagamed to a fine detail. And the snowball would get kind of massive, which was very annoying to me. Boy, I always loved the first, like, five to ten minutes. I loved it. Um, and sometimes I would do good. Honestly, I almost always got outpaced by other people. But I love Dragon Ball Z Tribute. I played the fuck out of this in high school when I was a kid. And then growing up more. And then when I got out of the military, I got back into it. I almost got to the point where I was going to buy a server for dedicated hosting of custom games. And I, was, I actually started to edit and work on and fix and detail some maps and some game modes for Warcraft 3 custom games because I think they're so cool. They're so cool, they're so good, they had so much potential, and then Blizzard fucked it. They fucked it. Um, they got greedy, and they fucked them all. They pissed off their player base, including me, and I just don't have the spirit anymore to be that motivated. I've reinstalled it on occasion. I think it's installed right now, maybe? Um, because on a blue moon, I like to play some of these things, especially custom hero line wars. It's very simple. But, yeah, some of the creators and original heavy hitters for maintaining these games have left. Because, again, this has been over a decade, um, close to a decade and a half since these came, games came out. And they were very popular. Uh, you could still pick it up, by all means, Warcraft 3 Reforge. I feel bad for saying that because, again, I don't think the main game's great. Uh, 
it looks better, and it can be fun to play. If you like, if you want to like get into Warcraft, you really know what Warcraft's about. It check it out. It's not the worst uh, expenditure you might. It's, it, I, I'd say it's fair, but cost of games is head over tails where it's at. Um, it's just so good for the content, but it's ironic as fuck that with the Reforge update, some of them you can't do anymore, and over time they've kind of actually devolved, so they're not in their heyday. You can still check this out, by all means. But as you can see from everything I said, especially Dota, like that's just objective. It's not up for debate. It doesn't matter what your opinion is. The amount of money and success it's had, it, you can't argue with the numbers. They don't lie. Facts and logic. <laughs> Bioshock 1. By the way, Infinite is overrated. <laughs> Heavy take. Yeah, hard pill to swallow that one. So, Bioshock series. Bioshock 1, 2, and AKA 3, which is Infinite and their DLCs, and I even said multiplayer. So, let's talk about multiplayer first, Bioshock 2. Bioshock 2 multiplayer, amazing, underrated, very fun. Um, it's now since ruined, uh, it doesn't, it's not supported on console, I think, at all even, and I, if there's still support on PC, the thing is, is uh, it's not really a thing, it just means it's able to be ran, but it's just overrun with um, cheaters and hackers, so you can't actually play um infinite is i understand the noir aspect and the better version sorry not version the better idea which i think is better of overarching story and the whole multiverse timelines etc spoiler that they have um it didn't feel like it flowed very well uh they made it flow they made it work um just didn't feel great um bioshock 2 is more of the canonical uh, it's part two of Bioshock, and it's fun. It's very fun, but I'm a story guy. At the end of the day, I need a lot of tits, dragons, and explosions, and shiny objects and jingling keys to distract me from a good story. I feel like all those things can be great, but they're used to amp up what is lacking. Um, if you have a great story, you don't necessarily need anything else. Uh, so, Bioshock 1. Bioshock 1, very good. I still highly recommend it. Um, the hack, quote-unquote, hacking system in that game is not aged well. I still laugh about how bad it is. <laughs> but, um, the story. Are you a man or a slave? A man obeys a... No, a man chooses, a slave obeys, choose! It is so good. And the underwater aspect of rapture, um, the real small religious references, uh, Adam, like, Adam. There's just so much that's good uh, about the game. Uh, it, it's dark, it's gritty, I think. The world is ready for another Bioshock. We are ready for another Bioshock. Um, Cause what I feel like Bioshock, but it's like Bioshock One updated would be uh, like the Warhammer Dark Tide game, but mixed a bit more with Doom, just like even gorier, darker, like Dead Spacey Doom Bioshock. The the world is ready for that game. We want that game. I think it would sell very well. Uh, the, the universe is very interesting lore that was made for the game. Uh, and you could just sit back and listen to hours to get a real deep dive onto how it all fits together. Uh, while it could be, you know, it, I think it could get it on sale for like 5 to 15 bucks. Highly recommend it. Do yourself a favor, get the first game. Get the first game and you can check out the rest. I think Bioshock 2's DLC, I think it's Minerva's Den, is actually better than the main game, maybe. <laughs> Hard take. Uh, Bioshock 1, though, solid hit. If you pick it up cheap, beautiful game. Fucking play it. Uh, yeah, enough said. Get Bioshock. Civilization 5. Uh, lol, I bought Beyond Earth. <laughs> yeah, I... 
it's weird because whenever I mention Beyond Earth, anyone who knows Civ, they know of Beyond Earth, but no one speaks of it. It's never brought up in discussion. I never hear anyone talk about it or anything. Because that game was basically the Fallout 76 of Civilization. They just, like, stopped giving it water and let it die. <laughs> I don't even know if it's playable. I always want to go back. <laughs> so, Civ 5. On a side note, Civ 4 is really good. Underrated. Uh, but Civ 5 just has more content. And then Civ 6, more content? But I don't like how they do the Suzu Ray stuff. I like the idea, it just didn't feel great. I don't know, it's iffy. I don't like the worker change that they did, where the workers get used up. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Civ 6 is weird. It also has a lot of cheesy tactical exploits you can use in multiplayer, in live games. Um, so there's just so many problems with Civ 6. Like, Civ 6, the, uh, God, what is it? The natural disasters, fucking love it. Um, I wish that was in Civ 5, but I feel like Civ 5, they, they just honestly did it better. Like, more doesn't mean better, necessarily. Civ 6 has more, objectively. I don't think it makes it better. And, of course, that's subjective. That's my opinion. But Civilization is a conquering game, um, and or a game of uh, renowned success and excess, where you beat your opponents in some measure, be it economically, scientifically, diplomatically, or via um, military. And so you start usually kind of like in a stone age, and then you work your way up to the modern era or futuristic era, even further on. And I think it's very fun. They have like 50 civilizations you can play as or some shit, um, or probably maybe even more. And that's why I'm going to all the city-states of minor regions, um, the different map types, and ways you can play the game, and victory conditions, etc. And this has a popular meme of, like, Gandhi with nukes, which has been debated to me, and I don't really have anything to gain or lose here. But I did do research a while back, and it was, I believe, said by the original person who made the reference, etc., that it was not true, that he was joking, because the thing is, with the, if you don't do random personality, the joke was that uh, if you don't do random personality, I believe you can get Gandhi, and where he basically would negative tick backwards into going from like good as could be to straight up evil and wanting to nuke people. Um, so that's just a game coding value issue, but that was hard proven in the game's going to not be correct and it was just a popular thing joked about now whether or not that is correct actually or just hogwash i don't fucking know i don't fucking care i think the meme is hilarious uh from what i've seen i believe it is not correct it's not true it's just a funny meme but a lot of people say it's true whatever sit five uh this is a game where i love marathon mode i don't like playing any kind of game where you build a city and a civilization that you expand and improve upon any kind of game like that and you immediately go for like a small map and you 1v1 someone like you're playing a game that you're supposed to sit down for hours and enjoy and you play it as fast as possible for a military aspect where you crush your opponent if you enjoy that cool i just think it's weird i don't think that's the intended way to play the game by the creators um at the end of the day it's however people want to fucking play which is the beauty of it but i love sitting back personally with marathon mode playing slow um and just exploring doing diplomacy with people very fun i still have a game of civ 6 and civ 5 with my buddies that we need to finish we've all been busy working i need to hit them up at some point and figure that shit out Kingdom Hearts. I don't even know how many more games are on this list. So, 1 and 2 and 1.5. The rest are man comparison. The story, music, or standalone beauty, that is the first game. So, <laughs> my god. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I just want to sing Simple and Clean and Sanctuary right now. You and I. 
Uh, okay, hold myself back, hold myself back. So, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 1. Kingdom Hearts 1 in particular, beautiful game. Oh my god, the story, the ending, the secret King, uh, the secret Sephiroth fight, and he's actually hard. The first time you fight him, you're gonna get wrecked. His health bar is so large that you have to go through one to two health bars of hidden health bars because his health bars can't even keep, aren't even able to be tracked because it's so massive. He has so much health, the game can't even track the, the first portion of it. It doesn't reflect it or show you it. Um, yeah, it is a great game. Um, it's a combination of Disney and Final Fantasy and original content about basically the idea of like the Disney rights when they multiverse into things that they own or partnered with and you take place uh, the game takes place as a little dude and his friends who have kind of get stuck into this adventure where they were trying to save each other and explore and figure out what's going on and stop the connection and the worlds themselves from disappearing and turning bad and save every save everything save the kingdom of hearts save everyone and it's beautiful it's funny i didn't say funny it's just quirky lighthearted um simple music and you know for when it came out hell side note when the land of innovation was still the land of innovation before it got like kind of neutered and cut up by disney for uh character meet and greets and other stuff it was a spinning disc and uh there's this, this horror story there where it actually mulched a person alive anywho um they had a ps2 station set up where i remember my parents took you know me and my sister out to disneyland i said i'm good and we i just bolted for innovation i'm like that's this is where i'll be and they're like okay and then they just explored disneyland them two and my sister going on rides and doing stuff and i don't remember what i asked like what happened i think um because i think i was just there the entire fucking day um i think that was my parents it could have been my dad and my sister and his girlfriend i don't remember but uh yeah i was just there at the ps2 and i think i could be wrong but i think you had to stand i think i was standing for like eight to twelve hours and it didn't even phase me i was having so much bloody fun and like people were like coming up like wanting to play and i'm like nah <laughs> sorry single player only yeah you can have it when i'm done <laughs> not today <laughs> and i was just there the entire time i almost beat the bloody game uh it was so much fun I think if I went back and play it, I could definitely go through it much faster now. Uh, it is so fun. The ending is beautiful. Again, the music is so beautiful. And you know what? 2 is a solid game. I love the Nobodies. Um, it was a good addition to the Heartless, Universal Lore, and Organization 13. Wonderful. And then 1.5 is solid. Totally different. It's a card game based version. It originally released on the Game Boy Advance, which is a portable little Game Boy. Um, kind of like the early predecessor of the Switch. And your attacks are all based on cards. And so you run around and you cycle through cards and you do different combinations and stuff. And they made a P PlayStation 2 port of 1.5 uh, later. And then 1.5 is Chain of Memories. Now, Kingdom Hearts uh, Birth Before Sleep, or Birth by Sleep. Uh, Dream Drop Distance, uh, 358 over 2 or something, Kingdom Hearts 3, Encoded, Recoded, Decoded, I think, and there might be one or two more that I'm bloody missing. Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, they have some cool stuff. Um, I don't think they come close. I don't think any of them are better than 1, and if you combine them all, they're definitely not better than 1 and 2 combined. Uh, not in my book. 3 was an enormous letdown. So, 1, 2, and 3 are like, imagine the main story arcs. Everything else is basically filler to explain the story and how it all works together. And so the conclusion was basically, in my opinion, lame. This is all the Dark Seeker saga? This is all one saga as well. So consider this like all of Dragon Ball Z. And then there's Super um, after that. So they're going to make more Kingdom Hearts games 
and they're going to have new sagas now of overarching stories, and it will outlive us all. If the world doesn't get destroyed, Kingdom Hearts will outlive us all, because it's just a never-ending Disney enterprise of collections of titles owned and stuff. Um, boy, I don't think they're going to be based, like, the new Final Fantasy, the new Final Fantasy content gameplay reveal feels basic, like same old, same old, doesn't wow me. The characters don't seem interesting. They, it looks like they want us to care, but they're not giving us a reason to care. Like, be interested. Why? Be interested. It's like She-Hulk. Farts. And if you don't like it, you're sexist. Like, they're just not good. Uh, they need to give us a reason to be interested that's wholesome and actually has depth. Uh, not just surface level. And that's what I feel like the other games are. They're just surface level. They're just copy-paste of the Kingdom Hearts mindset. But one... It's just so fucking perfect. Uh, I feel like at, if you do anything besides 1 and 2, you're going to like ruin it. It actually gets worse. 1 and 2, beautiful. So, highly recommend Kingdom Hearts. I don't care if it's a kitty game or, you know, it's silly. You, you're, you're playing with Donald and Goofy. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Play the game. It's fucking beautiful. There's different aspects of it you can enjoy. Highly recommend it. Uh, this will be quick. Left 4 Dead 2, my teen years consumed. So I spent so much time. When I wasn't doing, like, custom games in Warcraft 3, I was playing Left 4 Dead 2 with one of my main buddies during that time. We haven't, like, gamed hard in years now. He's kind of just doing his own thing. But Left 4 Dead 2, uh, oh my god. It was so much fun. It's still fun. I went back and played it recently. It's so much fun. Uh... Some people got way too good, and they, I, there are some cheats you could do, which are very annoying. Um, boy, the game is so bloody brilliant. There's mods, good collection of mods. You can play Left 4 Dead 1 characters. You can play the Left 4 Dead 1 maps. It's literally when you buy Left 4 Dead 2, you own Left 4 Dead 1. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it's a wonderful purchase. It's zombie killing, four people team up, and you go through multiple levels or chapters for an overall campaign setting. And use melee weapons and or guns to survive the horrors of the undead. Left 4 Dead 1 was popular, made 2, and 2 was so popular that it uh, nothing happened. <laughs> Until later, they made Back for Blood. Oh, uh, get it? Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, Back for Blood. Uh, uh, but that game flopped. They didn't really have a good end game mindset. Um, the constant uh, alarms bothered people, and it was very grindy without much content. And it got really, people really annoyed. Left 4 Dead, you don't grind. You play it or you don't. There's no, like, quality of gear or improved stuff. Everyone is basically just skins. They all do the same thing. Nothing is different or special or unique. You're playing some people. They run through the level. You shoot a bunch of zombies. It's very base level and very fun for that aspect. Um, there's nothing for microtransactions. There is, like, I think one or two, maybe, DLCs? I don't know. I think it was, like, co character costumes. Because they added more content over time. Infected and special modes and stuff. But, and then eventually Workshop for mods. I think that was all free. All free additions to the game. Uh, every now and again, I have this craving to just, like, play Dynasty Warriors. Just something inside me says, yes, you must now slaughter 5,000 Chinese warriors. And I get that out of my system. I don't really know what the hell that's all about. That's basically it for zombies too. Every now and again, I just need to kill a shit ton of zombies. Playing either uh, Dead Center, Dead Island, or Left 4 Dead. I need to just kill zombies. And this is great to play with friends. You can play by yourself as well. The problem is, is if you fully die, if all the player-controlled characters out of the four die, the level auto ends. So if you're playing Versus, then people could target you and it ends which is smart but it's annoying and also your boss could just be dumb uh dumb bots they also have aimbot like they're dumb sometimes they, they you'll just be dying right next to them and they don't know won't know what to do other times they can like beam you across the level if you're infected they just have aimbot it's insane they have great aim for stupid people halo 3 multiplayer oh my god yeah i need to take my girl out and take a shit after this as well how many more is there? Ah, uh, good lord. How many are I done? One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine. Oh, this is it. Okay, Halo 3 multiplayer. So this was King. Halo 3 multiplayer, the custom mode was great. Of course, there was the, the, uh, the hardcore stuff of doing, you know, free for all, the, I forget if it's like 13 players or something. And then there's capture the flag mode, domination, etc. Uh, all that stuff, very fun as well. But the custom modes, the defense layers people could do, so cool. Um, uh, the zombies idea. There's some really fun maps. Uh, I think it was it one was called Fat Kid. There's a couple of Fat Kid variants where you just have like this like near invincible zombie player, and then no one else can really like hurt him. They have to like all attack him combined non-stop for like five minutes to kill this guy otherwise if he gets close to anyone bop just insta kills and then he makes them a zombie to help kill the rest and so you have this slowly growing horde usually and then everyone else is like running for their lives trying to escape or go through an escape room level they just literally people motherfuckers built escape rooms for this game oh there's there's just so many fun custom games i love playing it with different people from high school um because halo was the thing Halo was so fun, and I feel like Halo 3 multiplayer was just the best version. And this goes beyond Halo 3 multiplayer because Halo ODST, because people like that, fair enough. Guess what? Multiplayer? Uh-uh. It came with Halo 3 multiplayer. ODST multiplayer was Halo 3 multiplayer. It came with a separate disc for that. And so you could play ODST. I think the the thing was, after you enjoyed the Halo 1, 2, and 3 story, which are the best parts of the story, then if you picked up ODST, you could get the uh, Horde mode, I forget whatever they called it, which was originally based off of Gears of War, and you could play their version of the Horde mode survival thing, uh, multiple rounds and a level and you just survive, and you could do that, but then you switch over to the multiplayer disc and you got classic Halo 3 multiplayer, and it was so much bloody fun. Um, so many friendships were made over it. Um, beautiful stories. I, I don't know. I'm going to go into that. Uh, yeah, if you never gone to the Halo universe, after 3, I think it gets bad. I actually think the ODST book was good. But, eh. And uh, some of the other books can be good. Um, I feel like the, the first three books were core, which are the ones that are telling the main story of John and the Spartan 2 program. Um... And I feel like the first three games have the core mouse story. After that, it just doesn't get good. I feel like the newest game, Infinite, really did Cortana dirty. I don't give a fuck about Cortana's spin-off cloned sister. Um, or the brute guy. Or the, like, Latino dude who wants to go back to his family. I don't give a fuck about any of these guys. Hell, and then the... Oh my god, the TV show. It's like the first 24 minutes of the TV show, actually good. As soon as the like next minute triggers, it, oh, it gets so fucking bad so quick. Oh, it's a shit show. Oh, it's so angry. How they just ruined the star, the series. They just pulled. I can't even speak. They pulled a Star Wars. Uh, <sighs> anyway, um, and then Infinite is free Halo multiplayer now. It's fun. I've uh, I've checked it out. While it's really cool, I take issue with half the weapons being kind of ass, proportionally damage-wise. So, half the weapons are garbage for, like, competitive damage output. You'll just get outgunned by other people with just better things, usually. And there is um, a hacking issue, kind of like Battlefield, etc., Call of Duty, where they, online there is uh, a notorious amount of uh, cheaters. That That's also a thing in Halo. And... Their microtransaction battle pass system to just grind out to get, like, cooler, different armor is complete garbage. It's very money-grubby for Halo Infinite. Halo 3 multiplayer was just the prime peak years of gaming for Xbox and Xbox 360. Like, I maintain that PS2 is better than Xbox because uh, it's like, you know, GameCube had, like, three to five good games, and that was it. Everything else doesn't cut, doesn't cut the cake. Same with Xbox, I feel like. Honestly, same with Xbox. They have, like, five really good games, and that was it. All the other amazing games and indie titles are Xbox 360. PS2, for Xbox era, was where it was at. PS2 was the superior option. And then, uh, 
then came Xbox 360, and then actually I will debate maybe even we over time. But, ah, eh, no. You know, it was just there in the corner. It was doing good, though. But, uh, PS3, not really. Um, yeah, Halo, so much fun. Uh, the thing is, though, is to get the best experience out of, like, Left 4 Dead, four players. Disgaea, Kingdom Hearts, Persona, all single-player games. To get the best experience out of Halo, you want... 8 to 16 players. 8 to 16. So they all have to have the game, they all have to have the console or way to play it, they all have to know how to play it correctly, and be uh, working in the mindset of the goal objective. Boy, damn it, it was very fun. Uh, you could just be gunning someone down and then a laser blast hits you or sticky from across the map, all kinds of crazy stuff. But yeah, I think without further ado, that's going to end the slideshow. So, Going back through all these, some stuff I didn't mention. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars game, very good. The the Pokemon video games, those were also close on this list. Uh, red and green, sorry, red and blue, and then yellow, and then gray and gold, and then emerald. Uh, I felt like those were like the peak games. I thought the phone system where you can call people up and then fight other people again and just like call your mom from distance, ask her to change some settings. So you don't have to actually go to your hometown to get to your mom to have her like stop saving or stuff. You can just do that via phone, challenge people to another match, it was super cool, and they would get better over time. Uh, I think the Lugia movie for Pokemon was awesome. And of course, you know, Pokemon, it, it's huge. Um, but I don't feel like honestly, it has m much of an impact on me as these other games have had uh for video games of course there's also the animation show the manga comic the card games overall it's bigger than some other things on this list but video game wise no it's not uh same with Yu-Gi-Oh. um i've spent a lot of time playing balloons tower defense game with monkeys and balloons boy has it had it as big of an impact on me as a person as these games no no it is not um, and Stellaris too. Stellaris didn't make this list, but I've have I have hundreds of hours of already on Stellaris. I love Stellaris, but um, it just doesn't have as much impact on me as Civ because I consider it a Civ clone kind of in space. It's what Beyond Earth fucking wishes it fucking was. Um, actually no, yeah, it's too different. But uh, yeah, if I had to recommend any honorable mention. Let's see. Oh, Super Smash Brothers, all the Nintendo games, Mario Party. I love Mario Party, but didn't make the list. I love Smash Brothers. Didn't make the list, but that's it, that's fucking close. Closer than Pokemon. I love Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers Melee. More so Smash Brothers Original for 64 and Brawl. I felt like those are the most fun for me. Um, and then there's Smash 4, Smash Ultimate. Uh, for me, it's just Brawl or the regular Smash. Loved them. Knights of the Republic 1 and 2, beautiful, great story, lots of content. Every now and again, I just play through 1 again. Again, somewhere I have it saved file where I just was trying to go through it again. Uh, I think I was attempting a build someone made where you actually max out defense and you play the game as a smuggler with a blaster. You don't even care about lightsaber. Because I remember hearing something funny where like you could just get to the final fight and like Malik can't even hit you or some shit boy it's just so bad <laughs> it's so bad but you know it's it's all right um <laughs> uh yeah that's an amazing story uh runescape wow star wars the old republic online mmo um warhammer age of reckoning mmo there's so many mmos D warhammer dark crusade um so that's uh god damn it dawn of war Dark Crusade, that is a standalone DLC for the first Dawn of War. It's like Sengoku Rance, but without tits. It's literally long and the visual novel aspect, because it's a Risk style of Warhammer. That, the world is ready for another one of those. Please make another world battling game where you have like eight different armies or some shit, or 16 different armies. 
all vying for control of a planet or its resources and they're all fighting each other and you could just play any of the armies oh why didn't they do that again <laughs> warhammer dark crusade so good if i had made a top 20 list i'd include like all these honorable mentions but alas this is just top 10 is what i have prepared um i might do another part two and then some of these might be included i'm trying to think of any other games Soul Nomad and the World Eaters was very fun. I like the different story aspects for that. It's also owned by Atlas, and they make a an appearance in, I think, it's got three or four, because the same company again, or parent company. Uh, Diablo series. I've been playing Diablo 2 a lot recently. I haven't been streaming it, but I picked up Diablo 2 to play with a friend for the last two weeks. Um, on the uh, PlayStation. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's had a lot of issues also since it got revamped. Blizzard at it again. But, you know, Diablo 1, fucking classic. Beautiful D&D story. Um, and then World Expanding, great additional content. And then Diablo 2, even fucking better. And you know what? Diablo 3 story is good. I It's like comparing Legends of uh, the Last Avatar to... Um, Avatar Korra? No. Um, Last Avatar, Air, Last Airbender is better, but, you know, Korra is actually not as bad as people give credit for. If you, like, look at it on paper, she's done way more impressive feats than Aang, but, uh, she's just not interesting. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, that's a whole other separate thing, but, uh, yeah. Let's see. I think that basically covers it. So I'm gonna have some other lists come up, some other videos again, most so they're gonna be anime related. I might eventually afterwards come back to this, expand it for part two. I have other things I wanna do, like I wanna upload poetry, I wanna do some readings, some literature, some sci-fi stuff. Um, I wanna do some song recordings. Boy, I just been working and I'm trying to find even more work. I need some more cash and flow. So I'm just gonna be busy, busy, busy. Um, I hope whoever watches this is having a great day. If you like this content, or if you have any games, if you have, like, the number one game, you know, that you, you love, you want me to maybe check out. I mean, I'll, like, do a video on it, but I can, you know, check it out and reply to your comment. Let me know. Or if you think any of these games are ass, you can say the game was ass. My opinion's not gonna fucking change, because I don't think these were ass. These are my top ten subjective lists that have, like, uh, these games have molded me. But, yeah. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye.